Hey guys, it's Captain Forest here, and today I'm going to be going over this spicy crossverse matchup. Today I have Dr. Manhattan versus Franklin Richards. Now before I start this video, please leave a like, comment down below, feedback is always nice to hear, tell me your thoughts down in the comment section, and of course, make sure you check out the coffee shop gang, their links will be in the description, they make awesome content, and also, shouts to HQ squad, shouts to Corey and O'Keefe specifically, this video would not have been possible without him so huge shout out to him his link will be in the description so yes i'm gonna go ahead talk about the blue dude himself dr manhattan then i'm gonna move on and talk about franklin richards dr manhattan is feared by mr mixie who claims that manhattan's abilities are far superior to his own now this is impressive due to mixie and the fifth dimension placement in the cosmology but before that let's work our way up to that level to start we have the bleed being on the same level as or even above the time stream this is showcased by the monitors when inside the time stream they state that the bleed is something they can't see or control this means that even beings that exist on the same level as the time stream is actually below the bleed now for why this is impressive is that we have seen consistent statements for the time stream as being beyond time and space and it was also stated as being unaffected by the confines of time and dimensions. Now for the second way to get the bleed to Altiversal, the bleed itself also contains the Rock of Eternity which is consistently shown to be beyond space and time, with it also existing in all possible dimensions showing that the true form of it is not just beyond normal space time. As the bleed surrounds and contains everything in the orrery, it should contain the Shining Tower which is stated to be located in the middle of existence, and the Shining Tower contains the concept of a concept. Now to summarize this, the bleed is altiversal as it at least exists on the same level as the time stream while also containing the rock of eternity and the shining tower. Far beyond the bleed is the sphere of the gods. You may be wondering how far beyond the bleed is into it. Well, as mentioned in my Superman vs Hulk video, the sphere of the gods is conceptually beyond the bleed as it's been described as a platonic archetypal world, the great realm of archetypal powers and intelligences. We established this as being in the outerversal ballpark before, due to conceptually transcending a high hyperversal structure, aka the bleed. However, applying the outerversal scaling that was presented for the bleed, the sphere of the gods skyrockets up to high outerversal ballpark, and of course, after this after the sphere of the gods we have limbo which is at least infinitely to inaccessibly beyond the sphere of the gods followed by the monitor sphere the monitor sphere is an archetypal realm and a fundamental world where everything is more profound and absolute and was described as a realm of nothingness beyond the multiverse the bleed the sphere of the gods and even limbo which means it's conceptually beyond everything I previously mentioned. In other words, the monitor sphere is a high altiversal realm. If we go with the scaling mentioned in Superman vs Hulk, it's a realm conceptually beyond high altiversal realms with the scaling that, I, that I've already applied in the versus matchup. Keep in mind, both scales are accurate. You see, I like to provide accurate versatility for my audience and give you folks multiple accurate ways to go about it if you smell what I'm cooking. Now as showcased in previous videos, all of creation exists inside four dimensions. Then we have the fifth dimension. The fifth dimension is described as existing everywhere and that it's outside of time, which is the name of the fourth dimension. Now the fifth dimension is described as a higher plane of existence that's more complex than the lower realms. Mixie also tells us that beings like him could not exist in a higher dimension, showcasing how beings from lower dimensions can't exist in higher ones. This would make the fifth dimension one inaccessible transcendence above the monitor sphere. 
Mr. Mixie in particular has shown himself to scale directly to the fifth dimension, destroying it without any effort in World's Funniest. This makes sense when you consider that Mr. Mixie is one of the strongest, if not the strongest, fifth dimensional imp. However, the astronomical power of Dr. Manhattan doesn't end here folks. Now, if you thought him scaling above Mixie is impressive, then you haven't seen anything yet. In the past, Dr. Manhattan tried mending the rifts left from, a, from the different crisis that has gone down over the years. This energy was collected by the quintessence and given to Wonder Woman when she had the power she was not only able to fight Perpetua but even to defeat her with the reason she failed being because of Wonder Woman's hesitation and once Perpetua regained her power she casually had Anti-Monitor take control over the, over the Ultra Monitor while also giving him his anti-life back. Perpetua was even stated as a hundred times more powerful than any version of Barbatos. Barbatos being someone who was able to strike down the World Forger. World Forger on his own being from the sixth dimension which Mixie notes that he himself would be unable to survive existing in. Perpetua is the mother of the multiverse which comprises of infinite timelines and four layers of existence with the highest being sixth dimension. A realm that isn't just beyond the fifth dimension. No, it's beyond the it's beyond the source wall itself. And to begin in the sixth dimension, all of existence is like a ball that she can easily grab hold of. Now, that's gonna round up the AP for Dr. Manhattan. Let's move on down the line. Now, let's find out what Dr. Manhattan brings to the table in terms of abilities and versatility. As we all know, Dr. Manhattan is capable of manipulating matter, heck, he can manipulate it on a micro quantum level. An example of this is when Dr. Manhattan killed Roshkoff by disassembling his entire atomic structure. He can disassemble objects with, his, with just his mere thoughts alone. We've seen Manhattan use absorption tactics, this is shown when he absorbed energy from the Green Lantern's ring and absorbed magical attacks. Wally West states that John is full of connective energy which is essentially a form of positive cosmic energy opposite in nature to the negative crisis energy wielded by beings like Perpetua. Oh, remember what I mentioned previously at the start of Manhattan's AP scaling? You know, the part where Mr. Mixie states that Dr. Manhattan's abilities are far superior to his own. This is good for Manhattan as it adds on more versatility to his arsenal. Versatility that is far superior to the versatile 5D imp. You may be wondering, what does Mixie have? Well, let's find out folks. Mr. Mixie has been shown to unmake the art and plot. Mixie was able to turn Superman into a cartoon and gave Superman cartoon physics. Emperor Joker who has Mixie's powers made a few superheroes into his own image by changing what their powers were. Something else to keep in mind, reassembling himself was the first thing that Dr. Manhattan learned. He has walked on the surface of the sun and experienced events that would be far too fast for, for, for humans to comprehend. Dr. Manhattan experiences firsthand the reboots in DC's continuity and yet he remains unaffected and additionally John exists in every timeline simultaneously. This essentially means that Dr. Manhattan has a causality type 1 and 3. Type 1 time paradox immunity characters with this type of a causality are rendered immune to changes in the past and standard temporal paradoxes but remain just as vulnerable in the present and can be affected by normal causality manipulation and similar abilities and type 3 temporal permanence characters with this type of a causality are incredibly difficult to kill as other versions of themselves 
from other points in time and or from other universes can survive the destruction of the original and act in their place. This also grants them immunity to changes in the past. And lastly, John is able to look into the future. Okay, so that's going to round up Dr. Manhattan. I'm going to go ahead and talk about Franklin Richards. Um, most of the feats that I'll be mentioning mentioning in this video, a lot of it is pretty much some of them, of some of these feats are pretty much of Franklin as a kid. But this will pretty much upscale to his adult form when he's when he becomes an adult. So just to make things not so awkward, because obviously a kid fighting a blue dude is kind of weird. So he'll be in his adult state, but these feats will all apply nonetheless. So let's talk about the phenomenal power of Franklin Richards. For starters, even as a kid, Franklin Richards was able to overpower Mephisto in his own realm. We've seen Mephisto battle Hela. Their battle would make Ragnarok pale in comparison and cause an omniversal Armageddon. When Reed Richards defeated Doom, he used those powers with the aid of Molecule Man to create the 8th Cosmos, using Kid Franklin's abilities as a cosmology shaper to dream up new realities, which led to the creation of the entire 8th Cosmos. Franklin was able to protect himself from harm, even when he's unaware of danger. An example of this is when young Franklin subconsciously defends himself from a celestial's energy attack by turning it into flowers. You can also see plant life begin to grow on another celestial. The celestials also describe Franklin as beyond Omega, which is very impressive just to show the extreme threat level that Franklin Richards is as a reality warmper himself. He also has powerful mental defenses even as a child. For example, Franklin expelled the celestials out of his mind after they tried to attack it. As mentioned though, this is Franklin Richards as a child. Franklin Richards as an adult is significantly far more powerful than his child self. On top of this, he literally made a well-fed Galactus his herald. Galactus and adult Franklin proceed to completely bully and mop the floor and defeat the Celestials. Galactus blasts the final Celestial only to get blasted back. Franklin tags back in and blitzes right through the final Celestial destroying it. If you want to hear more about a well-fed Galactus and what he is capable of, I generally recommend checking out my Lifebringer Galactus vs Dr. Manhattan and Nold vs Lucifer Morningstar video. So yeah, I think it's very clear to see that Franklin Richards is a cosmic level threat even as a child. I've mentioned in previous videos how being a cosmo level threat means you're essentially one to two infinite to inaccessible transcendences above baseline boundless. However, this is if you go to the root of eternity, only encompassing everything up up until the neutral zone, which isn't inherently inherently wrong to say, and it's a route that I usually go with more often than not. With that being said, there is another route that I would like to bring to the table and that's the route of eternity encompassing everything up into the far shore. If you choose to go this route, then being a cosmic level threat would be greater than one to two infinite to inaccessible transcendences above baseline boundless. It's worth noting that it also depends on where you scale oblivion as there is evidence that suggests the far shore itself is beyond oblivion. And there's also evidence that supports oblivion being beyond the far shore. If you go the route of eternity encompassing everything up into the far shore and then go to the route of oblivion being below the far shore, then a cosmic level threat would be inaccessibly beyond oblivion who is conceptually beyond everything that is beneath him, which would also include the neutral zone. If you go the route of eternity encompassing everything up into the far shore, but you don't go the route of oblivion being below the far shore, then a cosmic level threat would be at least around 3 to 4 infinite to inaccessible transcendences above baseline boundless. Now that we've established how powerful Franklin is, let's move on down the line and go over his phenomenal hacks and special abilities. Franklin is capable of 
teleporting himself or others through time and space, where adult Franklin arrived from the future with his sister, Valeria, with a flick of his wrist, he teleported the mad celestials into the core of the gas giant planet. And we've also seen Franklin do things like neutralize other abilities. An example of this is when adult Franklin created a box that can contain Black Bolt's voice and allowed Black Bolt to speak naturally. So that's going to round up Franklin Richards. Now I'm going to go ahead and break this fight down, talk about who has what in terms of stats and so on and so forth. So depending on how you scale DC, and depending on the ranges you use for both versus both DC and Marvel. So if we use like the low end stuff for Dr. Manhattan and we just use the standard stuff for, of course, Franklin Richards, then Franklin Richards would have the AP advantage over Dr. Manhattan more often not having more, uh, just being more stronger having better AP. Now if we give, of course, Dr. Manhattan his conceptual uh, transcendences, of course, we give him his boundless scaling and we use the, the same low end range, the, the low to mid range for Franklin Richards. They're both pretty relative, so it could go either way in that round. But obviously if we give Franklin Richards his better scaling, of course is more mid to high scaling then he would be vastly vastly above Dr. Manhattan so it just depends on how you scale the verses and depends on what ranges you use for both combatants so if you use you know one uh, one range for both then one might be weaker one might be stronger or one might be pretty much like even with each other so if we go off like the like just the relative route where they both have relative AP to each other, it's pretty close. You could argue both sides taking victory, but I see Franklin Richards kind of winning a little more often not in this round. It's very close. It's definitely not no low diff. It's not a stomp. I think like Franklin Richards, like his his reality warping hacks, his especially his plot hacks, his narrative, his conceptual narrative hacks. I think that's a bit too much uh, for Dr. Manhattan. Now, yes, granted, Manhattan has some good resistances to plot hacks, and he has his own type of equality and stuff, but I just think Franklin Richards is a bit more fundamental, a little, bit, a little more potent, so it just trumped that a little more. I feel like his reality warping would help him in this fight, as well as his uh, fundamental, really deep, profound conceptual plot hacks and narrative hacks um, it's very close in my opinion and like if Dr. Manhattan was to try and poof Richards away I don't think that would work necessarily especially like with how his powers just subconsciously protect him from like a celestial who's gonna blast him when he was not even paying attention so he could just transmutate that energy and turn it into, I don't know, flowers or sand or something. But it's very close. You could argue that, you know, Franklin gets smacked the hell out. But I just have to lean a little more so with Franklin, in my opinion at least. But if you think Dr. Manhattan takes victory, that's totally fine as well. But if we use, like, the better scaling, of course, for Frank, I just think he pretty much takes victory more often than not in that scenario if we give him his higher... Um, transcendences of course it's just way too much for Dr. Manhattan to deal with unfortunately uh, the narrative hacks would definitely be enough be more potent enough uh, compared to Dr. Manhattan's hacks resistances so I have to lean a little bit more so with Franklin on this one but yes guys just let me know your thoughts in the comment section on who you think wins more often not Thank you guys for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys on the next one.